Oh, yes, we yeah. When I ask a friend, where's your stress from? How do you know your stress? He said, I usually work myself up into a headache. The real cause of stress is in my, in my own head. After all, stress is a response, though usually it is a response to work. How I eliminate the stress depends on severity, medication, exercise, work, lot of them. Sounds like the key answer is more mature than our lots of older folks like me. <laughs> Stress is strenuous exercise and strenuous breaking, which is how I feel stress. So thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow guests, uh, members. This is not my first icebreaker, but I'm glad to do it all over again. See, the first time I gave my icebreaker, it was so bad that they wanted to go any lower. There's a bar any lower with the speech. You need either a paramedic or a janitor on stand. <laughs> <laughs> I was in grad school at the time, and I was going through kind of a rough patch. My project wasn't going so well, and I had some general anxiety about my future. So I had not been getting much sleep. The night before, I didn't get an hour of sleep. So to compensate, I took two caffeine pills right before my speech. I got up to the podium, put my notes down, took a deep breath, and looked out at the crowd, and my mind went blank. <laughs> I stared at them, they stared at me. After about 20 seconds, I said, I'm really nervous. <laughs> and blasted through my speech word for word in about four minutes flat. That wasn't the worst part, though. The worst part was the feedback. Well, let me tell you, it was so relentlessly positive. I realized just how pathetic I must have been. So, when you're judging me tonight, if you want to make me feel good, criticize me. And make me feel worthy of judgment. <laughs> and for those of you who have not given your first speech, if you do really bad and bomb, just take heart, you're setting yourself up to look really great for speech number two. <laughs> so, Shane uh, often says that people who come to Toastmasters come because they're in period of transition. And it was true back then for me when I was in grad school, and it's true for me now as well. So, I came to Houston not a year back, in July of last year, and I had low expectations. No offense. <laughs> But I was surprised to find that not everyone in Houston walked around with a six-shooter in their was supposed to in the first place. I was more surprised to find that Houston's so diverse that they even have street science entirely in Chinese. And I was completely shocked to find that they're all led by a mayor who was a lesbian. <laughs> of course, I don't like, like the relentless heat for eight months and also the fact that I could to get anywhere. But I found that Houston has its own charm, and I've grown to delight it. I got a great job here, and I think I can build a great life. But at the same time, I don't think that my future lies in Houston. And even the things that connect me to Houston seem to point away from it. So let me explain. For example, I teach a class on solar cars for middle school kids, one day a week after work. I'm an engineer by trade, and I like sharing my passion and my knowledge with these kids. And I've been building stuff since I was a little kid. I started with Lego, and moved on to stuff like robots and electronics like that, all the good stuff that years ago. It's very time. And finally, when I went to college, I really was motivated by space exploration. I wanted to go land on Mars, build something that went to Mars. But when I got into college, I realized my true interest was in energy, and the future of energy, and how we're going to power our planet. So working with these kids on solar cars, I realized that even though I work in energy already, I really, really have a passion for how we're going to power our world with alternative energies. Because the world continues to grow and need more power. There's China, India, Brazil, all in point power. And there's only so much oil and gas out there. But while Houston is the capital for oil and gas, if I want to go into something like nuclear, or solar, or battery, then all that research is being done in places like Palo Alto, California, or Cambridge. So I want to pursue my interest in energy and transition into those alternative energies as transition out of Houston. I'm also a big science fiction fan. Uh, I started a club for those sorts of books in Houston. Uh, but I mean, my interest started long ago. I was reading hundreds of books when I was a little kid, and I always had a soft spot in my heart for that genre. There's just something about building a world up entirely from imagination that seems to bring people together when they share the same interests and transcends any other differences in the real world. And I like that. I've tried my, I tried my hand at writing a book or two of my own. I was one in college that I've never seen by the day, because it's terrible. <laughs> and I started a few others. But I like to support our environments, and while I had some success with my club in finding people with the same interests, it's just not that big for a city this size. A place like San Francisco or Atlanta or New York would have a much larger crowd and be much more supportive for this sort of interest. I've also made a lot of friends in Houston. A surprising amount, really, given the short time I've been here. 
My company hires a lot of 20 year old specs. They send out to the field and then a lot of them come back and work in Houston. So I made a lot of friends that way and I met a lot of friends outside of work as well. If you would ask myself when I was a kid, if I moved away from such a, from such a great group of people, I'd probably punch myself in the punch. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I moved around every three years. I didn't have the luxury of keeping friends for very long. And to move away from a great group of people just seems converse to what I grew up hoping for. But if I think about it, a lot of my friends are recent transplants themselves. They've been in Houston maybe one or two years. And their plans also lie outside of Houston, business school, other companies. So just by staying here doesn't mean that I will necessarily have a company or keep their company for long. Um, Houston seems to be a place of transition for a lot of people. So there's many other reasons, but in the interest of time, I'll talk about those three only. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure where I would go next, or when I'd go, or what I'd do when I get there. What I do know is that public speaking and speaking in general is a skill that I can use anywhere. And hopefully by helping all of you guys with your public speaking and any other skills to to that, and having you help me, I can have a skill that I can bring to my next group. And if I ever give another icebreaker in some other city, in some other club, hopefully it says better than this one, that this one is than my first one. Oh. Thank you very much.